Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain and maintain optimum health. Let's talk about a new perspective in regards to mask wearing and COVID-19. Just recently, I've been seeing a lot of social media posts regarding mask wearing and high carbon dioxide levels, medically known as hypercapnia. It definitely got me thinking. I mean, conceptually, it kind of makes sense. And it made me wonder whether there's any evidence for this. Do masks cause hypercapnia? Here is a common example of a figure I saw on social media. So according to this post, the concern is that when you breathe normally with a mask on, you inhale the carbon dioxide that you just exhaled. High CO2 levels in the blood can be harmful and it can cause a myriad of symptoms depending on the level of carbon dioxide in your blood. It can cause things like an altered mental state, irregular heartbeat, loss of consciousness, altered decision making, breathing difficulties, and worst of all, when levels are really high, it can be fatal. Thank goodness most people in their everyday lives don't experience hypercapnia. So, is there any evidence at all behind wearing a mask and hypercapnia? Well, the people that say yes quote this 2006 study. It's titled, Carbon Dioxide Rebreathing with Close-Fitting Face Respirator Masks. It was quoted as a study, but in reality it's a correspondence letter. Therefore, it didn't have to undergo peer review prior to being published like a study would have to be. It begins with an anecdotal report or a story of an intensive care doctor who experienced what was believed to be hypercapnia after spending 30 minutes in a PFR 95 respirator. That's the European equivalent of an N95 respirator. The same article references how they looked at four anesthetists that were also wearing the same type of mask. They measured expired carbon dioxide and saw a slight increase. None of the anesthetists reported any symptoms of hypercapnia. Interesting article, interesting anecdote, but the study was small. It only looked at four subjects. And most importantly, it didn't actually study the type of mask that most people are using when they go out and about. This would be a cloth mask or even a surgical mask. This is the mask they studied as opposed to these other masks, which most people are wearing. The authors conclude the study stating, clearly our findings are of uncertain practical significance and further trials would be required. So masks have been around for a while. They've been used regularly in the healthcare setting for over 100 years. If hypercapnia were a serious problem with regular mask wearing, I think we would have been tipped off to the problem by now, don't you? Let's talk about my experience. I'm a surgeon. There's times when I operate and I wear a mask continuously for up to nine hours. All the other individuals working in the operating room with me, like the anesthesiologist, the nurse, and the scrub tech, they all wear masks as well. Well, none of us, I mean none of us, get dangerously high carbon dioxide levels in our blood from doing so. As a matter of fact, we don't show any of the aforementioned symptoms. And this is for a long surgery, not a 20 minute trip to the grocery store or another short time we have to wear a mask while in public. So why is this? Why do we not get hypercarbia when we're wearing cloth or surgical masks? Well, it comes down to particle size. You see, masks, they're meant to reduce the spread of droplets that are formed by talking and sneezing. These droplets could contain harmful particles. Let's take a look at the SARS-CoV-2 virus particle, since that's the reason why we're all currently advised to wear masks. Particle size of this virus is about 125 microns. When this virus is in droplet form, most masks will stop it from spreading outside of the mask. Compare that to the size of a carbon dioxide molecule, 0.000232 microns. That's teeny. This molecule is about 1,000 times smaller than the virus. And so are oxygen and nitrogen molecules. So the coronavirus is 0.125 microns and CO2 is 0.000232 microns. These small molecules can easily sneak through a mask. They even sneak through an N95 respirator. Cloth masks have been shown that these molecules allow easy passage in and out of the mask. And the same goes for surgical masks. So if carbon dioxide can easily pass through the mask, there's no way it can build up and cause hypercapnia. It's just not going to happen. So in what situation could it possibly happen? Well, it could happen if you were wearing something that had no ventilation properties whatsoever, like a plastic bag over your head or something like that. This bag, it wouldn't allow carbon dioxide to escape. And as you exhale, the concentration of CO2 gas goes up and up, causing hypercapnia. 
you'd also get hypoxia or low oxygen levels because the fresh air outside the plastic bag can't get in. But this is not how regular masks work. When you wear a mask, air moves with each breath as it's designed to. If this didn't happen, yeah, you bet we'd see people having symptoms of hypercapnia. Healthcare workers routinely wear surgical masks for hours on end, and there's no hypercapnia happening there that we know of. So next time you hear somebody mentioning hypercapnia, ask for the evidence. Ask for the science behind that claim, because as far as I can tell, there's none. Please, please don't believe this misinformation. Wearing a mask is an important part of slowing the spread of COVID-19, along with other measures like physical distancing and hand washing. Please don't forget to wash your hands. If you find any more evidence on mask wearing and hypercapnia, let me know. I would love to see tons of rigorous studies on this. Hopefully researchers will get this done soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something useful and valuable. Until next time, stay healthy, stay well, and aloha.